greetings to you once again, my brothers, my sisters, and Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name <clears throat> that is above every other name, and at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows and every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, indeed is the Lord, and we serve um, the one that is above it all, and in Him we live and move and have our being, and we exist in time and space. We exist in this window of life that we that has formerly been classified as um, <laughs> time, which is now being even the very constructs of what people have considered reality are <clears throat> are changing. Oh, here's here's one for you guys. Um, if you read the King James, check out. Acts chapter 12, verse 4. My dad sent me this one the other day. Acts chapter 12 and verse 4. Um, you'll see the word Easter has appeared in the King James Bible. The thing is, there was no Easter during that time. So check out that verse when you get a chance and start to ask a few more questions. Um, <laughs> so as all these things are kind of shifting and, and changing... And uh, literally, things are changing even in the very scriptures that we've been reading and studying over time. There's there's a reason I believe that that is happening too, and that's part partly that Jesus even talked about, you know, until heaven and earth pass away, that not one not one jot or tittle would um, would change from the law, that nothing would, and I think you know until. And until there's this fulfillment and until there's a lot of things that that are getting ready to take place. And I, I this is just kind of my personal um, read and feel on it, is that part of the reason why some of these things are changing and are shifting is because um, heaven and earth in its current form is passing away. The paradigm that we've known is passing away. The rock that came and smashed the whole earth, or not the whole earth, what am I saying? The rock that came and smashed the um, the idol in Nebuchadnezzar's vision in the book of Daniel with the <clears throat> head of gold and the chest plate of silver. Uh, just, you know, you go through the bronze, the the iron and the clay and the feet. But then when that was crushed by that rock that was cut without human hands, pulverized into nothing, and it was became like chaff on a on a threshing floor and then was blown away, <clears throat> well, what was the result of that? Um, there was no trace of what was. What was was now gone. And the rock that did it grew and filled the whole earth. So that being the case, and what seems to be now the time that we are shifting into and moving into, which is a new reality, you know, the new reality, the new normal. I, I mean, think, think about it. There's, there's <clears throat> okay, here's something just to keep in mind. Every, every person that's born today in this time, they come into a world where <clears throat> um, the internet always existed. They come into a world where you can talk to anybody anywhere in the world at any time that you would like to. That's, that's just how life is. That's the way that it's always been, right? <laughs> I mean, they come into a world where somebody can put up a podcast and you can listen to it anywhere in the world. Now, this is this is normal. This is the way life has always been. Just just allow that to sink in because if you've I mean I grew up part of my life on two different sides of the planet. And um you know in that time <clears throat> I went from writing a letter <laughs> I actually grew up, grew up writing letters and mailing them, putting them in the mail. It took two weeks for a letter to get to the States or for a letter to get to Sri Lanka. And if somebody turned around and wrote you a reply that day, it took another two weeks for it to come back. So if you sent something off, it would take a month 
to hear to get back a reply, provided that something didn't get lost in the mail, somebody didn't steal your mail, or something didn't happen to it along the way. That was the normal of what life was when I grew up back then. Today, the normal is instant communication, is is this totally different way of relating, and that continues to change and shift. So the generations that will be growing up at this time, they're coming into a very, very, very different paradigm than the one that, that everybody before knew. Now, <clears throat> now, as this continues to shift and as this continues to change, the, the, the other things that are changing right now, too, is that things are coming into the light that were people thought were hidden. People thought were nobody knew. People thought could be swept under the rug. And things are coming back to people, haunting people. Their behaviors they're becoming accountable for in ways they never thought they would be accountable before. So those kind of things are coming up. <clears throat> then also falsities and falsehoods are being are are it's you know, now in a time of, of over communication or lots of information, if somebody puts out the truth, you you see now a flood of things come out to try to just put so many other messages there so that it drowns out that message of truth. Kind of like the the people that were killing Stephen when he was speaking the truth, what did they do? They didn't want to hear it, so they put their hands over their ears and screamed at the top of their lungs so they didn't have to hear it. That's kind of still the approach today when people publish truth is that they just try to put forward the lie on every level they possibly can to dilute <clears throat> that truth, kind of like like people like CNN in the U.S. I mean, they've got a reputation for that now, right? You know, they're just a propaganda outlets. So, but to put forward a particular viewpoint from the people that control the narrative from that section. But as time goes forward, what you're going to also see, too, is ways to 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 know what's true and what's not. Because that, too, is going to shake itself out. And, you know, in that process, people that have made their stock and trade in telling lies and being liars will be seen for what they are. You know, the, the new paradigm that we're moving into is a time, is, is it's, and I don't even want to say the word time, but it's a new reality. And it's a reality of where things are what they are. You know that the 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 inverted world and the inverted world system that we are coming out of, uh, one way or the other, you know it's <clears throat> it's it's not a done deal how we're coming out of this, but we are coming out of it, whether it's through repentance and through people aligning themselves with the living God, or whether it's through a nuclear conflagration, whether it is through annihilation, whether it's through whatever it may be, but we are coming out of what we've been under. That is going to happen. And it can happen a lot of different ways <clears throat> because there is creativity in this whole thing. But we are coming out. And, um, you know, the children of Israel could have walked out of Egypt a lot of different ways. Egypt didn't have to be destroyed in the liberation. They could have just let God's people go. They could have kept the promises. But instead, Pharaoh choose, chose to allow for his entire nation to be destroyed and plundered on the exit. So God's people were still leaving. <laughs> They're still, they were still on the way out because he was going to bring them out with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And <clears throat> nothing, when God decides to move, and in their case it took 400 years before he decided to move, but when God decided to move, nothing could stop his hand and nothing could stop his decision. And we're living in a time where God has decided to move on this situation. And whatever time has passed before doesn't matter. Now is the time that he chooses to do what he's going to do because it's his timing, his way, his plan, his purpose. Now, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I've read some interesting books over time, and one of them was kind of, um, you know, it was, it was some discussions on from uh, 
this guy named Emanuel Swedenborg, and I and he was he in his latter part of his life, you know, early days he was a he was um, an intellectual in the king's court, and he did a lot of things and was credited to a lot of accomplishments in science and navigation and um, <clears throat> just a lot of different things. Seemed like a pretty amazing guy. <clears throat> latter part of his life, he started having what he called it angelic visits and experiences in the realm of the spirit and he started writing about them so there's a lot of stuff that's out there that he's written and I've read some of these I found some of the insights <clears throat> um, fascinating one of the things that he wrote about was an experience that he had had in <clears throat> um, an experience that he'd had with uh, a visitation with what he called hell and two things that he kind of drew from, which were, were that struck me in, in the writing, which was why certain people don't do certain things while they're here in this life and what happens on the shift to another paradigm. And <clears throat> two things that keep people from doing the worst possible thing here in this life. One of them is the... Um, the fear of punishment, you know, of, of and so that that is a, that is something that will restrain people. And um, <clears throat> the other one was the fear of the social stigma for being seen for what they are. So if people knew, if people found out, how would they be perceived? And the difference is, is once you're out of this life and you're in eternity. Well, in eternity, you know, now. You are seen in eternity for exactly what you are. Because you become, when you leave from this life and you go into the next, you become a, a representation in the spirit of exactly what you are within now becomes what you are without. So you're known for who you are. There's a complete alignment with who you are inside and who you now are seen to be. So in this world, people can pretend to be one thing, and they are something else in in who they are inside. <clears throat> so they can dress it up a certain way, but then when they're actually, um, when you see what they really are behind closed doors, in secret conversations, in their own own little world that they kind of keep hidden, well... In the eternal reality, you are exactly who you are. And you're completely aligned um, externally as internally as you are. And you become an internal representation, or you become an external representation of what you are within. <clears throat> so, um, so that happens. And the second part is, too, as far as the fear of, of punishment and consequence, well... When you go into eternity, you go, you know, to the place of your choice and the place of your destiny, and it's built into. You get your reward, whatever it may be. <clears throat> so that's why, you know, in, in that paradigm where you're seen for what you are and you receive in yourself the, um, you, you reap what you've sown. But here in this reality, now this is where it gets, it gets one of the transitions as we pray for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, you know, now as we're seeing the kingdom coming, well, what are we seeing a, a transition and a manifestation of? Well, one, <laughs> we're seeing people being um, facing the consequences for who they really are. Not for who they try to pretend to be, but who they really are is becoming brought out into the light for the whole world to see. And it's a terrifying thing for people that thought that they were doing things in the darkness, that they thought that they were doing things that they would never have to, to pay for, or never there would be no consequence for. And now that's starting to creep up on people. And it's a scary thing. It's a scary thing for a lot of them because <clears throat> they thought that that was hidden. But blood cries up from the ground. Um, God has seen and he knows and he understands. And 
this process of what's going to happen and take place is a transition. And we're seeing that take place. So now consequences are coming up. <clears throat> That's the other part, is that first there's, there is um, a revelation of who people are, who they really truly are, is being brought up. And the other part of that is in this reality, this paradigm, there's consequences. Now, here, here's the thing. This is also where I think God is being merciful, is that he's giving people the opportunity to repent as things are being exposed for what they are. That's the window <clears throat> where people get the chance to repent. They get the chance to get right. So what happened with, with Noah, or not with Noah, with Jonah and Nineveh? Well, God spoke to Jonah and he said, okay, go to Nineveh and tell them, you know, that 40 days from now you're going to have this, you know, that you're, tell them to repent or tell, tell them that this is what's going to come and for what they've done. And he went and preached. Well, first of all, he tried to run away. And everybody knows the story of Jonah getting swallowed by the fish and the boat and all of that and spit up on the <clears throat> um, spit up on the, the beach afterwards after he repented in the water. But with Jonah, once he preached um, and he he spoke what God gave them, gave gave him to speak to the people of Nineveh, they repented. They repented before God for what they had done. And <clears throat> God spared that city. Now that was the way to do it, and they had done. And Jonah actually he he wanted to see the place destroyed because of all the hardship that they had caused to the people of Israel, and um, he wanted to see them destroyed. He didn't want to see them repent. He wanted vengeance. Even though God said, "Vengeance is mine," says the Lord. Jonah wanted to see vengeance. He wanted to see God to strike them down. But they repented, and. You know, there was, there was, I mean, that was, that was the right response. When God exposes and shows and reveals, that's the chance and the opportunity that people have to get right with Him. Um, now, it didn't stay because three generations later, um, they had, the city of Nineveh had gone back to the worst sort of thing. And um, then at that point, the word came again, but this time uh, destruction came and the city was destroyed. So, <clears throat> you know, it's a very short book in the Bible. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it's Obadiah. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's just that city was destroyed. <laughs> when, you know, later on when the, when the, when they were brought to account for what they had done and they chose not to repent. So I think right now what we're in is we're in a window and a season where God is exposing everything. He's showing things for what they are. Everything's being revealed. Everything's being exposed. Everything's being brought to the surface. Now, in that time where things are seen and known for what they are, is there now, is this where justice steps in and adjudicates the crimes that are actually crimes that actually need to be brought into judgment? Where, where is this a time where people repent before God for the evil that's taken place in their land and their nation um, in His name, using His name to, to justify evil and to do terrible, horrible things? Or do people continue on down a destructive path? Do continue, people continue on, and do they 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 turn their back on God all the more? Do they um, do they carry on in the worst sort of things? That's the question, <clears throat> and that's why some of this stuff is a little bit up in the air because the question is is what do people do once things have been exposed, once they've been revealed? So do people repent and get right with God, or do they? 
now put themselves in a position in a situation where um, what's left is is judgment. Here's the thing, too. If you if you think that that things can continue to go on as is when God moves, no, it doesn't work like that. When he when he decides and he sets um, some things in motion, nothing can stop it. And when he sets some things in motion, nothing is going to um, be able to to uh, to halt that. So. <clears throat> What's happened and what's taken place is that he himself is moving. And as he's moving on the earth, the, the consequence of that is there will be a response. There will be a reaction. So there will be a response. There will be a reaction. There will be consequence. So, you know, it's, and this is where, you know, God is merciful, but there's also judgment. God is, and he, once he starts to move on something, see, when, when what he does happens, there will be, he's a, he's a righteous judge. And, you know, the scriptures talk about when certain things happen, even in the book of Revelation, that people don't repent, that they get mad at God. They continue on all the more, and they double down on the wickedness and the evil, all the more, despite the fact that they're being destroyed as a consequence of their actions. But God gives people space and time and a chance to repent. He gives people the opportunity to get right and to be different, to make a change, to make a course correction. <clears throat> so right now, I, what is happening has been this unveiling, this global apocalypse, this global unveiling that's been taking place as part of this wave of light that has been coming in um, <clears throat> that is the culmination of a lot of different things that God's been putting in the works and planning and uh, communicated to all of us a long, long time ago, but, you know, how to speak about, you know, in several years back and all the things that have led up to this. And you got to just go back and check <clears throat> some of the old records if you're curious but why? Because he has his plan and his purpose and his concept and his idea for his earth. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So this belongs to him, not to any man, not to any demonic principality or power or wickedness in high places, not to any demon, not to any billionaire. You know, and all those people that have their billions. Listen, all of that stuff can be wiped out in a second. You know, wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness saves from death. So <clears throat> go check that scripture. You know, you, you, you're not going to get away from God. And, and also, too, so much of that is, is fake. You know, it's a fake system. And a fake resource. It's all based on a collective agreement. Well, what happens if nobody respects the measure in which you've captured your value in the first place? If it's ones and zeros on a screen, and what happens if that's not worth anything to anybody? What happens if people start measuring value in a different way? What happens if people start exchanging value in a different way? Oh, I, I don't think these these people that have been in control realize that it's just two or three clicks can change everything. The paradigm can change dramatically. You, you don't think so? Okay, well, here's one. <clears throat> okay, um, somebody thinks that they've got the world by the tail and then they walk, they get a, bit of strange pain and they walk into the doctor's office and they find out they've got 
stage four cancer. Okay. Has their paradigm not shifted? Has things not shifted? Have they not changed? Is their worldview not different now? Is their priorities not different now? Is the place that they want to spend their time not different now? One piece of news, one piece of information, one change, and what does that do? And that's on an individual level. What happens on a global level? What happens on a country level? So many things can shift and change, my brothers and my sisters, so easily. So many things can happen and change and shift. You've got to flow with God. You've got to flow with the Spirit. You have to allow Him to lead and guide you. Because that is a different way of existing. That's a different way of being. Now, we we weren't taught that in our religious systems. We weren't taught that. People alluded to sometimes some things in scriptures, but they didn't know how to do it because they were part of the world. And you can't teach something that you don't know. You can talk about something you don't know, but you can't teach it. You've got to live it. You've got to have experienced it. <clears throat> I tell you, when I did some, when I was in college, there's such a difference between a professor that had experience than a professor that just lectured about something they'd studied. Night and day difference. When you've experienced something, when you've gone through something, you know. So God calls you to walk in the Spirit. He calls you to walk and, and be flexible and trust Him and flow with Him. You know, we, we gave the instructions out very, very early on that would <clears throat> keep you in this time. And what were those instructions? Well, one, keep your eyes on Jesus. You know, you got to keep your eyes on Him. You focus your heart on Him. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Ride the wave. You know, ride the wave. That was something right from the start. Ride the wave. Why do we get that vision, that analogy to share? Because it represents exactly what we're in the middle of. I mean, and we got to thank God for that. Because He gave us the vision, the analogy, the picture, the understanding so that we could draw on that for necessary knowledge and wisdom and understanding in the time and in the space so we knew how to be. And a wave is fluid. You know, a wave is power. A wave is, you, you, you know, you're in the moment when you're on a wave. You can't be somewhere else. You've got to be in that moment, and you have to adjust in that moment for exactly that situation. You can't plan and anticipate for you know, something else. You can't make a 10-year plan for you know, some possible future set of waves. No, you're on that wave. And if you're in a sweet spot on that wave, you're going to enjoy the entire, um, the entire thing that happens. And if you're in the wrong place, you're going to get rolled, you're going to get crushed. You're going to get swallowed up by it, you're going to get spit out. So keeping your eyes on Christ is how you stay in the right place and the right focus. And He'll direct you. He'll direct your path. He will direct your vision. He will direct your priorities. He will direct the work of your hands, the meditation of your heart. He will be the one to direct you so that you know how to go through the time you're in. So ride that wave. And keep your eyes on Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things should be added unto you. Basically, the things you need, God's going to take care of them. So keep that priority first. And what's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, how? And the way that works is when you love God with your entire 
with your entire being of all that you are, <clears throat> the overflow of that, because there's a flow, like rivers of living water flow through your <clears throat> through your entire being, through out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Now, off the overflow, you can love your neighbor as yourself, because you have that now in you. <clears throat> you have that in you to love your neighbor. You have that in you to to be a living representation of the kingdom of God, where there is abundance. The kingdom of God is one of abundance. The kingdom of God is one of of there is there is no lack in him. None whatsoever. The world is a zero sum game. <clears throat> the world is built on scarcity. The world is built on debt. The world is built on an inversion of what God has and what God is. And the world cannot create because there's no creative power in it. It can only take what God has made and twist it and pervert it. And the world needs you to buy into it in order to perpetuate itself. I'll say that again. The world needs you to buy into it in order to perpetuate itself. Because there's no life in it, so the only place it can get it is by siphoning the gas tanks of other people that have some life in them, and they've got to get them to buy in. But the second that people buy into the world, they too become dead. So as soon as they become dead, they siphon off the bit of life that's still left in them, just like cutting off a green branch off a tree. But now they need another one. Now they need more. So it's a giant Ponzi scheme. The world system is a giant Ponzi scheme. That world pyramid is just a Ponzi scheme. And... <clears throat> Well, every Ponzi scheme eventually crashes under its own weight. But the kingdom of God is one of abundance, one of righteousness, one of peace, one of truth, one of justice. And the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, not a matter of word, but of power. There's power, brothers and sisters, of Christ Jesus, there is power in the living God. And there's power in that name that is above every other name. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it more times than I can count now. The power that is in His name and the power that the people of God have that walk in and live in, in Him they live and move and have their being. I've seen the power. It's, it exceeds anything the world has. That, you know, that's the reason why the world won't leave you alone. Because you've got the greater power. You've got the goods, and they don't, and they know it. So they can't afford for you to get out there and be real. <clears throat> they can't afford for you to operate. Because the more that you exist, and the more that you move in your gifts, the more that you move in your talents, the, the, uh, you, you, it stands the chance of waking up more people. And more and more and more people that wake up and exit their system, they lose their power because they need the buy-in. They need the people to reinforce the collective. The second that you wake up and you become the individual that God made you to be, quickened by Him, your gifts empowered by Him, you cause damage. You cause damage to their system. They can't control you because you're like the wind. You go where the Spirit leads you. They They can't so they can't control you. They can't crush you because, you know, even though they crush you and even though they, that you're still not broken and you still move forward and you still trust God. And in fact, you consider it pure joy when you face trials and tribulations of all kinds because you know that the, the testing of your faith builds perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope, and that hope doesn't disappoint. So now that is terrible for them. Because you don't respond the same way that, that they're expecting you to when you go through a difficult experience and they throw something at you. So now what do they do? So then they try to put you on the backside of the desert and put you out of earshot and out of, uh, out of view. Well, <laughs> the internet has made that terrible for them because you can be on the backside of the desert and you can still reach hundreds and thousands and millions of people with the truth 
and wake people up. So now, what's the world going to do? And what's the world going to do about you and about everybody else that's waking up? So they're in a they're in a predicament because as people wake up and as people exit, as people walk out, as people trust God, and as also as things are being exposed and evil is being exposed for what it truly is, and we're starting to see just truly how dark and evil all this stuff is. What are they going to do? I mean, this is where the world wants to try to catch as many souls as it can before it loses them. But you know what? God's got his own plan, too. God's got the way that he does things. And it's not their way. It's not their thoughts. It's not their motives. It's not their intentions. So, this is, again, you got to flow with God. Because... It's not going to be the cartoon book that everybody thought it was going to be. It's not going to be the the flannel gram and just all these things that people have created in their head. Because they did that once before. They did that in Jesus' time. They had all the ideas of how the Savior should show up. And they missed it when he did show up and fulfill the prophecies, did everything that needed to be done. They missed it. People are going to miss it. And God is accomplishing what He's accomplishing. There can be a point where people, all of a sudden everything's changed, and you can't go back. Because it's the new normal. Now what do you do? When, when God moves and things shift and things change, it's the new normal. It's exciting times, guys. So be in prayer. <clears throat> Read the Word. Trust God. Focus on the fundamentals. Focus on the basics. Do the things you know to do. And when there's something in front of you to do and God quickens you to do it, just do it. Just do it. Just, you know, you don't got to worry about a lot of other things. Be in the moment, be in the present, and do what God gives you to do. Because you already know this. You know that he that began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. So let him carry it on to completion. And part of the way he's going to carry it on to completion is by you obeying and doing the things that he gives you to do so that you can see the manifestation of those and and the, the byproduct and the growth in your own life because you're following Him. The way He completes the work, the, the way that He completes the work in you that He started is by you going forward with Him in, in unison and in oneness and cooperation, being grafted into the vine following the good shepherd it's your free wills engaged so he that began a good work in you carries it on to completion because you're there for it to be completed you're walking with him you're trusting him he's doing it in you so you got to know that you got to know that that <clears throat> that you've got to engage yourself now <laughs> There's only so long that you can watch on the sidelines. What more information do you need in order to engage? What more do you need in order to put yourself out there? You've seen long enough. I'm not speaking to all of you guys. I'm speaking to a few of you that are listening in. And you know who you are. Because you've been watching for so long. And... You just refuse to make the move. Why? Why? The world's got nothing for you but death, pain, destruction. God offers you life, and more abundantly. And He offers you a way off of the Titanic. 
you might want to take it while there's time. You might want to take it while there's opportunity. You might want to take it while he's offering it. Because you may get up and that may not be there anymore. You may not get up. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us brothers and sisters at all. This is your moment. And we serve I am. Right now is your moment. So in this moment, align yourself with the truth. Align yourself with righteousness. Align yourself with peace. Align yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And let everything else be what it is. And know that we love you guys and we we pray for you. We pray that God bless you. So God bless you. We love you. Uh, Keep on keeping on. Thank you guys for those that write in. And um, yeah, we're still trying to figure out a little bit with uh, this Spreaker, um, how to do interviews. We'll we'll get some of those kinks figured out as time goes on. But um, thank you guys for writing in and and, uh, just giving us feedback on things. We appreciate it. You can always reach us, faithmix at gmail.com. That's where you can reach us. And, um, you know, the podcasts also go up besides Spreaker. They go go up on faithmix.com. So, yeah, you can reach us those different ways and say hi. We appreciate you. Love you guys. God bless you. In Jesus' name, Lord, I just pray your blessing upon each and every person's life that's listening in this day. Bless them and keep them, Father. Um, Help them to walk with you and help them to walk with you in peace. Help them to walk with you in confidence. Help them to walk with you in your plan and your purpose, in your kingdom that is coming and in your will that's being done. Help them to walk with you in fullness and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. and Protect them from the enemy of our soul. Protect them from the devil. Lord, bless them. Bless them in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, you guys. Well, we love you. God bless you. And keep on keeping on. And just know that God's with you. And um, it's all good. All right, you guys. God bless you. Bye.